Hi there, everybody. I'm going to finish up Elijah tonight. Um, been an awesome study. There's the lessons from Elijah by Andrew Womack. And, you know, last week we talked about, <laughs> you know, God asking Elijah what he's doing here. Asking him, you know, twice about that. And Elijah kind of gave him the same um, answer both times. And since God kind of put him to the test, but, and then Elijah, kind of, or God told Elijah, go, you know, kind of more or less kind of find your predecessor. And, and uh, so, and here, you know, kind of recap last week, First Kings at the end of it, First Kings 19, um, God told Elijah, and the Lord said unto him, he said, go return uh, on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint uh, Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of uh, Nimshi, shall anoint uh, to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, and uh, Abimelech shalt, shalt thou also anoint to be prophet of thy room um, and it shall come to pass that him that uh, is uh, escaped the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay and him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel um, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him because remember you know, Elijah he ran, he ran off it's all in 1 Kings 19. So if you want to read complete the story about Elijah, it's in 1 Kings 18 all the way through you know, 19 here a little bit. Um, so at the end of this, you know, Elijah kind of ran, ran, ran off after, after the Mount Carmel and, and everything that he'd done there. And God, God asked him and told you, what are you doing here at this mountain? And, and uh, so, but Elijah kind of gave him the same excuse on, on the eye, on the eye of the prophet. You know, I've, I've done this all work for you, blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of see it here. Um, but during this last passage, and again, if you, if you uh, saw this last week, um, God asked him to do three things. And the first two things, actually, he didn't do. He did the, he did the last thing first, which was actually go find Elisha. So that's what he did here. So in 1 Kings um, 21, uh, around the 19 area there too as well, Elijah, Elijah anointed Elisha. Um, but if you notice, throughout this time, Elisha, you know, he, he didn't do very much during this time. It was, it was basically the end of ministry. So Elijah was never, he never anointed the, the two kings that God told him to do. And last week, if you remember, I, or if he was here Sunday, um, you know, title of my message is about what if. So this chapter here, or what he's talking about, has, has a lot of what ifs. So here he's talking about you know, what, what if, okay? So the, what if, you know, um, you know Elijah went and, and, and anointed the kings like he was supposed to, okay? What if he did all that? If he was obedient when he did Jehu, you know, Ahab and Jezebel, they, they wouldn't have done what they did. They would have already been dead. And so Elisha did finally anoint him. So Jehu, he, when, he, so he reached out, you know, to the room and, and he went to straight to Samaria and he killed, you know, all those people. He could have Isaiah, Jezebel, and all the Ahab relatives. But Ahab, you know, he, he died earlier in a battle. So, but Jehu, he took over the kingdom. He, he deceived these people when he, when he started beginning to reign he called all the Baal worshipers to come together in one house. And, and when he did that, he, they, they closed the gates and closed the doors. And um, in a sense, you know, all, all of them, he, Scripture tells us in 2 Kings 10, 10 20, that he's victorious because in, in a sense, he made all the Baal worshipers, he killed them and it kind of made them to the blood was like a latrine. So now here's the what if part. What if Elijah had known a Jehu king and Ahab and Jezebel would have been dead and Naboth, if you remember, you know, um, Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard, but he couldn't do it because Naboth wouldn't sell it. So Jezebel wouldn't, you know, got killed, uh, went and knocked off Naboth. So now Je Ahab ended up getting it anyways. But what if he didn't? Nab Nab Naboth, he would have been killed. And uh, so the, the death of Naboth was actually, in a sense, because of what Elijah didn't do. Right, because if he did what God told him to do to begin with, then this, then in a sense, this guy here may or may not be dead. You know, but like I said, there's a lot of what ifs in this part of here. So, and it, you know, you kind of read it and kind of draw your own conclusions there if you really want to. But, but I don't, I don't do a lot of what ifs on this part here. And 
And, you know, there's no doubt Elijah, you know, he didn't fulfill what God told him to do. There's no doubt about that. But again, we will never know because there's nothing really written about that. Now, keep reading this book here. And I love the next few parts of it. It's talking about, you know, called by grace. You know, there's a lot of people in people's lives, and, and you probably know this too as well. And you may may even know some people this way that were they they feel like they were called, you know, for for God, right? But they but somebody else was in their steed or somebody else in their spot first, and so they they feel like they're kind of becoming second best or second fiddle, whatever you want to call it at that time. And in all reality, I kind of I, I kind of see what they're ta talking about here because when I was uh, when me and Jana was the youth leaders here, you know, back here uh, when it was Lakeview, you um, know, we had some you know, pastoral changes and so forth kind of going along. And, and again, maybe in a, in a sense, the assistant pastor at that point in time, he really wasn't all into it either. So, you know, there's days that he, he called me up on Sunday mornings, hey, I'm not going to be there, which is kind of pretty frequent at that point in time. And so I had to step in and, and, you know, and do the Sunday service too as well. And, and uh, so, so in, in a sense, my, my mind said, well, if I'm going to do this, I want that position. So I kind of, you know, bid it for it, but, uh, but nobody, you know, really uh, agreed or didn't, didn't, they agreed, but didn't disagree or whatever. Then, but then we, you know, I kind of dropped the subject and, and uh, then we finally started getting to find a different pastor. So I feel like, you know, in a sense, I was second fiddle, um, you know, and so... But it all worked out well, you know. I, uh, you know, I eventually did leave the the youth uh, here, and uh, part about I don't know six, seven years later, somewhere around that area, uh, if not sooner, you know, I came back to when it was Lake View and and I started speaking again, and then then took over the pastoral ship here. And so I was very honored that because I knew God, He didn't want me to have it at that point in time because I wasn't ready yet. And because in all reality, I was, I was doing it for self. And it's like, I, I can do this, you know, no big deal, no, no problem. But so God said, no, not, not quite yet. So at that time, I felt like I was not a very good choice or I felt hurt but from it. But I understand it later that it was not quite my time. And I do know a lot of people that, so I need to recognize that and in this book, it says we need to recognize that God has never yet had anybody qualified for working him, working for him. So if you kind of really look throughout the Bible, anybody he called um, to do his work, in a sense, wasn't qualified. Right. I mean, Moses had his uh, speech problem, you know, uh, you know, in a sense, no, he's drunk. You know, David, he cheated and. Paul, you know, he killed a lot of people. I mean, you name it, it was all throughout there. There was no perfect person in the Bible, in a sense, that was qualified, okay, uh, to do God's work. And and because only people who think they were qualified was was what the the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So so they, anybody else, they wasn't they they wasn't that way. So, but never think that you're not qualified to to speak God's word because in all reality, you are. Because we were all qualified to do this. You know, anybody who was called according to, to his purpose, right? And man, to what scripture says, all things work together. So, and, and, and they do. All things work together for good who are, called, who are called according to the purpose who love God. So, and just because, you know, what, what God's telling us, more or less, we, he uses people that, that are available. He uses people that are responsive. He uses people that are, that are fully trusting in him. And that's, in a sense, that what, that's what Elijah did there at the beginning. But a little bit later on, you know, things happen. And a lot of times things happen in, in pastorals, in pastor's life and even a prophet's life. You know, you name it, anybody who's a, any, any kind of ministry, you know, they, 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 they can have some issues, but but the moment you think that Lord is actually using you because of who you are, now now that's the problem, you know. Because an earlier, oh God, can use me because man, I was a youth leader here. I was stepping up to the challenge. I was doing all this, and in a sense, I did have a a haughty spirit or a prideful spirit. Because Proverbs sixteen eighteen said, "Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit, you know, before." Uh, uh, before a fall. So, 
And I believe God had me covered during that time. He's not quite yet, Rich, because you're kind of getting a little bit full of yourself. And you need to kind of step back and, and you need to learn. You need to kind of, you know, pray about it. And it, it took me a while. It took me, you know, a few years to really kind of come into that fruition about, about what God wanted for my life. And so, because God can actually easily put somebody in your spot, you know, if you, ain't, if you ain't really careful about it. But that's the reason why we need to stay humble. Because God loves us and, his, and, and, and by his grace, that is the reason why he's called anybody to minister. Because we are ready and available for him. But a lot of times, again, we, we have a lot of pride built up because of all, all that. Or, or uh, we may be too afraid. We may have fear, you know. But, you know, Scripture tells us that God does not give us a spirit of fear, right? But, but then again, we have that, 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 that fear of what if I'm not good enough? What if I don't speak well enough? What, what if people don't like me? What if I'm not getting the God's word out there well, well enough? What if, what if it's not received? And see, all these things here kind of go through my head. In all reality, they, they still kind of go through my head today. Even after I get done with a, uh, I would think, you know, an awesome message from God. You know, here comes, here comes the devil right in my head. I mean, you didn't do good. Listen, you know, look, they didn't listen to you. You know, they're, they're, they went one ear right out the other. You, you're worthless. You're, you're not a good, very good speaker. I mean, it, it, I mean, I can go on and on and on. But guys, I, I you know, I love what I do. And, there's not a time that I, that I feel too prideful uh, because it's not me doing it. I'm, trying, I'm, I'm doing it for God, not for Richard, not for, not for New Beginnings Church. I'm doing it for God. And so I don't want to get to a point where I feel that way. And if I do feel that way, man, I hope God humbles me down, you know, brings me down into, into humility because, you know, things are not – we're – it's not really based on our performance, you know, the gifts or the gifts of minister or whatever, because your gifts are called in by grace. Because in Romans eleven twenty nine, it says, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. And, and then I do believe that is true. Because if you are called by God, it doesn't matter uh, how old you are or whatever. You will always be a minister for God. And guess what, guys? You are a living and walking disciple of Christ as well. You are living and walking in a way minister of, of, of God at the same time. Because we are all ambassadors of him. We are supposed to be what? Christians, right? And Christians are supposed to be Christ-like. So we all have certain gifts because scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit you know, divides out the gifts whom, whom he wishes right and so each one of us has a, a measure of a gift and you look it up in in, in uh in first corinthians kind of give you all a little bit of uh bible study okay uh read about that a little bit first corinthians 12 uh, but see elijah he, he he didn't he had to humble himself when god tested him so but when god asked him what are you doing here asking he asked him that twice again remember elijah gave him the same answer so God gave him an opportunity to kind of really, really do that. But, but, um, <coughs> excuse me. But if you're proven to be a person without character, see the Lord, he, he won't promote you. And again, that's where haughtiness really kind of comes into play in the, or, or, or pride. Because why, why would God, okay, listen to me. Why would God promote somebody who doesn't, really have the spirit for God. I mean, this world in all, in all sense, man, they'll, they'll promote, you know, anybody who's, who's, who, who's friends with whatever. If you kind of look at it, you know, people on TV, radio, you know, they become famous because, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's what they did, what they or what they have done in their life. And instead of actually kind of, you know, giving God the glory because man, just, just think about it. What if they actually really gave God the glory at the beginning? Would they be more where they are now? Because Scripture tells us that, you know, the, uh, he will uh, exalt the hum humble, right, and, and bring down the, the humble. Um, maybe that's kind of correct, hopefully. I'm not, I didn't write it down, so I'm not. But, but, uh, but it's, we don't need to fall into that. So, you know, God, he can use you no matter what. And he can use it because of being faithfulness. Because faithfulness is actually pretty important. And, he, and God rewards, you know, faithfulness. And he has a perfect plan for each and every one of us. That as long as we are totally 
you know, dependent upon him because our, our, our independence, our, oh, what is a, uh, it's not really performance based, right? But our ability and experience to fulfill that plan will actually depend on how closely we are actually walking with God and staying in his word and obedient to him. So, see, Elijah, this, this paragraph here, it, it says Elijah was a man who did great things, and there's no doubt about that. He did some awesome and awesome mighty things, but also Scripture tells us that Elijah was just a man. So, in other words, Elijah had some faults. Elijah kind of failed during his time, especially when God spoke to him in an audible voice. You know, God, God told him, Elijah, you know, I want you to go out and do three things, anoint, you know, Jehu, uh, and oh, let me go back here real quick about the other um, uh, and ha Hazel go and don't Jehu and Hazel then go find your predecessor but but he didn't do that so he, he in a sense he kind of disobeyed God on that part but regardless or not I want you to notice this and it's in first, uh, second Kings still Elijah was still Translator, in other words, still caught up, you know, in a whirlwind. Still, God, you know, took him, even though you know what he did towards the end wasn't all that great. Uh, but still, God used him. Still, God loved him so much that that he that he took him up. Only two people in the Bible actually was was actually what they call translated or 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 taken up by God. One of them, Zenoch, because he walked with him. He's a friend of God. And now we have Elijah was taken up by a whirlwind. So so. We know that, that, that God still loved Elijah no matter, you know, even if he kind of messed up there towards the end. <laughs> but uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up 2 Kings to me with, with me real quick. 2 Kings um, 2, okay? It's kind of continuation a little bit more. Um, getting out of 1 Kings into 2 Kings here. So Elisha was kind of fulfilling the, starting to try to pick over for him and take over for him and, but Elijah, if you notice, he really didn't fulfill the ministry. He kind of quit there a little bit in, in, in the stream. Um, and here in 2 Kings 2, chapter 2, verse 1, and it says that it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elisha said unto, Elijah said unto Elisha, he said, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel, and Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho, and Elijah said unto him, He said, Tarry, I pray thee, uh, here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they <coughs> too went on. So here reading the scriptures, it shows us that Elijah tried to split off from Elisha at least three different times. But Elisha, he just kept holding on. He, did, he, didn't, he didn't give up. And because and Elisha, he, he started off with a concept exactly what Elijah did in 1 Kings 18 about wanting to be close where God, where he can actually hear his voice. So he wanted to be, be there. And Elisha knew exactly what was going to happen to Elijah. Okay. He felt that in his spirit, he, he knew, you know, that, that Elijah was trying to do something or trying to get away. And, and so Elisha knew that, that Elijah wasn't going to be long for the earth. So he kind of, nope, I'm going to hang out with you. In other words, you can't get rid of me because he knew his place was with Elijah, okay, not, not somewhere else. So that's the reason why he wouldn't take no for an answer because Elisha was a pretty faithful guy, and he was. And, and I like that about Elisha because Elisha said, he tried to get away, and, he, and Elijah, you know, if you read the story, he said, what do you want from me, right? And it's what he said. He said, well, this is what I want. And, and um, he said, I want a double portion. I want a double blessing. So... He said, okay, I grant it to you when, if you see me go up. And, and, and he did. So, and when he went up, the Elijah's mantle fell. So Elisha picked up his mantle. Okay, so, so here we see where Elisha was already taken up, you know, taken over for Elijah. But if you read the stories, Elijah did say this many. But over here, man, Elisha did this many. I mean, he did double the, 
the uh, uh, blessings, double the works and uh, miracles and everything that, that Elijah did. So you can see where Elijah kind, kind of did here. Now, Elisha, he performed twice as many miracles, but yet he wasn't translated. What I mean by that, he died. He died here on earth. And remember, Elisha, Elijah, you know, he, he kind of, he did great there at the beginning, kind of faltered towards the end, but, but then God still took him up. But Elisha seemed like, you know, and again, this is a lot of what ifs kind of going on here. Um, and I'll explain that to you in a few minutes. <coughs> but Elisha, you know, he did twice as many miracles, but yet he still died. Okay, 2 Kings 13, jump all the way me to, to chapter 13. And because uh, it said Elisha, he died of, of, of being sick. It said, now Elisha was falling sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming end of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, uh, that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Now, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, about here we got a dead man and Elisha is still so anointed that when they threw, threw him on just on the bones, okay, just on the bones of Elisha, that this dead man came back to life. So, so the thing about that is, and, and, and it's kind of hard to understand is, is or not very hard to understand, but to concept maybe, I guess you could say. Um, if there was enough anointing in the bones of Elisha to bring him back to life, why couldn't Elisha take care of his own sickness? Okay, think about that a little bit. Why couldn't Elisha take care of his own sickness if a man who's already dead Come back to Elijah just by touching the bones, which Elisha was already dead at this point. Why couldn't Elisha perform his own miracle on himself to, to do that? It's kind of, and again, that's one of those what if things there a little bit, you know. Um, and and what could it be that was was Elisha, was Elisha, Elisha more faithful than Elijah? I don't know, it's kind of hard to really say, although Elisha did did double the, double the, uh, Miracles, but was he more faithful? Uh, it's it's it's, it's kind of hard, you know. They, they 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 had different results, right? So it's kind of hard to really see. But it's too many variables, and and like I said, there's not enough information in God's word about that. But uh, it's just one of those what if things, you know. But I take God's word as it says, and it gets, gets one of those things that kind of gets you pondered just a little bit, you know, on that. But see, there's still too much. There, there's still a lot to learn from Elijah. You know, a lot. You, 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 a lot of people heard, man. We need to have the spirit of Elijah be poured upon everybody here. You know, we need a spirit of Elijah around this world. We need a spirit of Elijah down in our house or church or whatever. And it's be this. Actually, the spirit of Elijah is, uh, if you kind of really understand it and look at it, the spirit of Elijah is the boldness that he had. Okay, the boldness to proclaim God's word. The boldness to stand in front of the king. And say, man, there's going to be a drought for three and a half years. And just went on about his business. See, that's the boldness. Because back in that time, you, you can't really go in front of the king unless you're going to be summoned and so forth. And so he may, you know, he kind of took a chance on, uh, you know, being killed. But, but he had the boldness to say to that king. And that's where the Elijah spirit needs to be upon everybody. We, we need to have that boldness to proclaim God's word in this world. And, and the thing about it is we don't need to be the latter part of that either, God, but, you know, because we, we, you know, we have a lot of success and start feeling like you've been doing a lot of things. We need to start drawing more closer and closer to God because that's when we need to be more God dependent instead of be dependent upon self. So we need to have that, that first part of that, that, that first spirit of Elijah because, you know, we need to maintain a, a humble attitude because, if you do, the Lord will be able to preserve you um, from the kind of problems that we, we saw in the very first part. Um, 1 Peter 5, and I love this. Okay, 1 Peter 5, uh, and I'll finish up with this. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 6. It says, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. Okay, all of you clothe yourselves with humility. Okay, 
toward one another. Humility toward one another. Because God opposes the proud. And again, what Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit you know, before a fall. So God opposes the proud, but shows favor, okay? Shows favor to the humble. <coughs> and it says in here six, humble yourselves. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And again, I, that's really, I love that verse there so much because I could have easily fallen into that part there about being a haughty spirit. Look what I've done and so forth. But God said, Richard, you, it's not your time yet. And at, and at that point in time, he humbled me quite a bit. And he's actually humbled me even throughout my uh, you know, 10 plus years of uh, you know, ministry now. You know, do I think I'm the best of the best? Oh, man, I am far from it. And guys, you know that too as well. But I love God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. I'll, I'll do the best I can for him. And that's, in all reality, guys, that, that's all you can do. You can just do the best you can for God. Because, you know, he doesn't call the equipped, right? He equips the called. And, but never think that you're not qualified. Never think that you're not qualified to anything to do anything for God or with God because if you have him in your life, man, you really, you really can't go wrong. But we have to submit ourselves to him. We have to humble ourselves to him. And, and a lot of people don't like to be humbled. They don't like the feeling of, of being humbled or because they feel a, a, a feeling of, of being weak. And guys, in all the reality, I don't mind being weak. You know, a lot of people don't like criticism. A lot of people don't like, uh, you know, being told wrong or whatever. I don't mind it. <coughs> the reason why I don't mind it, because if, if I'm doing something up here uh, for God, if I'm not doing it the correct way or I should do it a different way or whatever, hey, man, I, I'm, I'm all for uh, uh, recommendations or suggestions or whatever because I love doing what I do, and I want to be the best at it I can. So guys, never think that you're too prideful to do God, God's work. Always we need to humble ourselves. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for awesome, awesome uh, lessons and, and lessons from Elijah. You know, we do need to have the spirit of Elijah. We need to have the spirit of boldness in our life. We need to, to, to go out and proclaim your word to, to everybody, Father. And Lord God, to do that, we need to have you inside of us. We need to have your Holy Spirit you know, dwelling in us. We need to have your Holy Spirit overflowing with us. We need to have that fire for you. And a lot of times I think in this world, a lot of people out there, I think that fire for, for you has actually gone out. And we need to fan those flames. We need to stir up that spark. We need to en engulf each in our lives with that, with that excitement that once we once had, you know, for you when we when we first came, you know, to, uh, to you and asked for forgiveness. Because God, I've been there, done that. And there's days in my life that, as you know, Father, that I feel down. I, I feel, you know, just dragging. And that's the days there I have to God, to God, fill me, revive me. Fill me back with your Holy Spirit, Father. Give me the fire for you. And guess what? Every time that happened, I know you gave it to me, God. Because, God, I know because you love me. Father, Lord, thank you for everybody who's listening. Father, God, just touch them only that you can. You know their issues. You know their problems. You know their sins or struggles or trials and tribulations. You, name, you know everything about us. But Father God, I ask you for you to search our hearts. Prick us. Have us draw closer to you. And all this, son, all this I'm saying to your blessed son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Guys, y'all have a blessed, blessed time, blessed few more days. And I will see you guys Sunday at 945 for Sunday school. Okay. Uh, if you have your books, go ahead and bring them because I don't have any extra books. I think we all gave her all our extra books out. And that session's actually kind of gone away at this point in time, so I can't order any more books in that particular session. Uh, we may look at that and maybe order some different ones or, or maybe go to something differently. 
you know, Sunday morning, but hopefully see all you here Sunday at 945, and we'll get started from there. God bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye.